So we've talked about what's just around the corner. Let's look forward to Frontiers. And yes, we get future news chat. Today, that topic today as well, rather. Uh, Ooh, or story these stuff. Two fine individuals to my left, which you've met at some point or another, but our friends over on the community team. Hopefully well, they tease something here. Of, just, I need know, something. Just what the audience give me a little bit of some chat. Players are saying. And so um, we've had, obviously, some topics come up that I think we should just go ahead and dive on into. Yes. Let's yeah. party. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Let's, I like that. Let's party. Let's go. Give me some story stuff. Always the answer I want to hear. Um, so, Robbie, we'll go ahead and start with you. Uh, you know, one of the things we said is that these expansions are going to be medium sized. Mm -hmm. Can you help us understand a little bit more about what that okay. is? Yeah, definitely. So, expansions are changing going forward with Codename Frontiers. And mm -hmm. so, our philosophy behind this is moving from one really big, all consuming uh, tent pole moment that kind of takes all the oxygen in the room uh, at, at one point in the year to two, what we consider big tent pole moments mm -hmm. happening in each year. And so those tent pole moments coming twice a year now are gonna bring with them uh, fresh content and new stories that are gonna move the world of Destiny forward. And to answer your question directly, the way we're kind of looking at the size of these is, is similar to like Rise of Iron mm -hmm. uh, from, from Destiny 1, and, but, but this is happening like twice a year uh, as compared to the past. Yeah. And so, um, you know, what's kind of, what, the reason we're talking we about do this like Rise of the Iron box here uh, that we're, we're filling is that um, what comes with it is like each expansion is going to have its own unique version of a campaign and mm -hmm. post-game experience uh, that you can dive really deep into yeah. beyond the initial playthrough, mm -hmm. similar to how things like the Dreaming City or the Pale Heart from the Final Shape had worked, where those beyond those initial campaign experiences, there's like further things to explore and secrets to uncover. And yeah. so making our expansions unique and deeply replayable mm -hmm. is a big goal for us uh, in large part to support all the new gear and the new tiering of gear <laughs> that we're putting into the game, yeah. right? And so it's it's one about, uh, so like, you know, each of these expansions, again, they're gonna tell uh, a really compelling story as part of our next uh, saga, but I, I really wanna stress that they're also gonna be unique uh, experiences, unique campaigns and post games. Yeah, from I know that's something like, you know, I've, I've kind of overheard some of the conversations where when it comes to these expansions as well. I'll recap know, it, don't worry, the, the I've got thoughts. Use, corollary, pardon me, we're using today sure. is Rise of Iron, but like these are gonna be brand new experiences, things that we just like haven't released before in the past. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that as well? Or Yeah, definitely, um, and so, for Codename Apollo specifically, the, the first uh, expansion coming up with Frontiers, uh, you're gonna journey to a Metroidvania-inspired destination, right? What? That's our guiding light for how we're creating this new location. Yeah. And so this new destination is gonna feature- Socks just dropped out of law school. That puts you, you know, in the driver's seat mm -hmm. of exploring its world and its story. So this is very different from the past where you're kind of following a very uh, linear mission structure sure. or, or line yeah. that's that's uh, that very simple in many ways. And Allison actually recently talked a bunch about this in a blog post. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, when we made the decision to lean into that Metroidvania structure, Holy we knew crap, that the yeah. narrative structure had to match, like had to complement that structure as well. And so the way that we're going to treat nonlinearity in Codename Apollo yeah. is when you arrive at our destination, which mm. is a new destination, yeah. you'll be able to decide if you want to go to Region D or Region C, or maybe you want to go check out B because that's going to be where you get the ability that allows you to access Region A so you can talk to that character that you really like. Yeah. We really what? I like this. Being in the driver's seat of being able to decide where and how they want to explore and discover the secrets that we have in Chad, the world. Chad, do you feel that? And whichever of do those feel that? choices that you make doesn't negate the others. We want you to explore every crevice inside of the, the experience. Hype train is starting, and to help Chad. Support that, we've structured our story in a complementary way. Yeah. So we'll have uh, the normal kinds of like activity dialogue that you normally experience in a campaign. Mm -hmm. But there's also between 25 and 30 different threads of stories that you can discover and chain together after you complete an activity. Yeah. Uh, there's so much richness to discover yeah. that we're creating. You see that little thread of that shining rock somewhere. You can really just afford to pull on it and just dive in. By the Absolutely. That's yes. what we want you yeah. to do. Okay. That's oh, awesome. this so actually, sounds let's cool. Let's stay on the topic of story here for just a second sure. as well. Um, you know, I think that there's been uh, some conversations about the future of Narrative Destiny, mm -hmm. which has obviously been so central to the experience, yes. so core to our characters and our stories. 
stories. Um, there's been some concern that maybe the new structure might not afford the opportunity for as much story in the past. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about what you guys are planning and well, what that means? That would be news to me if yeah. it suddenly vanished. <laughs> I, I like I like what Allison, I do. Please stay. Yeah. Please yes. tell yes. that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Is this how we find out? No. Oh the no. The story is destiny. Too soon. Like, what too makes soon. Destiny, yeah. destiny is that beating heart of story at its core. Yeah. That's not going anywhere. Yeah. The thing that this new structure allows us comes in two parts for story. Mm -hmm. Like part one is pacing. With these two temple beats a year, mm -hmm. the feeling that the world is changing and growing and moving is going to come much quicker now, yeah. which means that we can move the plot along at a much quicker pace than we used to. Totally. Part two is we'll focused, have to see how that works. Uh, because these are uh, much more focused releases, mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about padding the sides uh, <laughs> with a bunch of extra stuff to kind of fill in the space. Like, nope, we are zeroing in on exactly I like what these okay. releases is trying to communicate. Yeah. And okay. so that means we're going to tell a more focused story and with pacing that keeps up with what fans want. Yeah. I mean, it's also, too, it's interesting because, you know, obviously the narrative is one big part, the story you're telling, the words on the page. But another yeah. part of it, you know, given that we have the unique opportunity with a medium like video games, yeah. is how players interact with it. We've seen yes. some comments online and some notable conversations about, you know, go talk to Vendor X, head over yeah. to the Hollow Deck and say hello to this other. They're addressing go back this to too. X and shake their time one, hand one more time. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that structure? What you guys are planning on? Yeah, it drives oh. us bonkers okay. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh, we we believe that everything should be questioned, right? Like we yeah. should be questioning that structure, and yeah. we should be reinvestigating it. And starting with Revenant, and especially mm -hmm. when we get to Apollo, starting with we're Revenant, we're going to be deliberately shaking it up. By the time we get to Apollo, that loop, that pattern, mm -hmm. is more or less gone. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Up a lot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Allison spoke to it earlier, but all those threads that you're pulling on, right? Like these are characters out in the world yes. that you're exploring and discovering, mm. right? As part yeah. of your journey here. Yeah. And so it's not. Yeah. She's awesome. The same location. I love her energy. You expect to and her see passion. someone delivering a piece of information mm -hmm. to you between, you know, specific missions. It is like you exploring the world, finding these people, pulling on all these different threads in order to discover things within this weird and wonderful exactly. place. Yeah. The feedback is loud and clear. We want to get keep the player out in the world, out and exploring yes. and get information to them. Yeah. I don't want to go to the yeah. tower we're, we're or the helm. So, I, mean, I will say, Allison, you didn't arrive empty handed. You've got some cool concept art to share with us as I've well. I've got some goodies. Okay. I've got some presents. Thank you. Somebody fix her mic. Yeah, happy birthday, birthday, everyone birthday. who was born on Looking October 1st. Looking at concept 1st. art is always a joy. Exactly. It's a good way to go yeah. about it. It's better than wrapping. Yeah, no, she spoke directly to the <laughs> point, true. which is uh, awesome. Let's go ahead and take a look. So this is, uh, uh, we've got up on screen uh, kind of one of our first pieces of concept art. What is here. this? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what we're looking at here? No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> on purpose. Uh, what I can what tell is you this? is that this is some concept art uh, of our new destination, which, like I said, is a new place that we haven't been Who to before. Who are these people? Which means that these people that you're seeing are people that we haven't met yet uh we're going they're to learn alive about them and I, I love this piece because the longer that you look at it same yeah. with some of the other art that we've shared so far what you start to see things that are kind of familiar uh, yeah. all the way out at this new location yeah it's like so uh, lots it, of fun things who is this the symbol on that banner is this a seance or a wedding ceremony who knows, i know right? yeah. and i'm not telling <laughs> telling a single soul no nope. mm -hmm. uh, okay all right uh plenty to chat to, who, including who are those people they're alive here, here yes. as well yeah uh, something yeah, yeah something we talk about a lot and like i think the last concept really like like spoke to it is like when we're especially when we're developing a new new what the hell is this look at the flowers this, like, down in the foreground really think about like what is a storied history that's happened here mm -hmm. what's something that players can, it's like, like really an astral kind of glow to it deep into and um you know going into this concept something that i i love about it that's really resonant with me with a lot of the early creative discussions we had on it is that we wanted this place to feel like um, an exotic world that uh is just tailor built around the joy of discovery, right? Mm -hmm. And then so yeah, you can see like stairs and caves in, in Apollo. Um, you're going to be discovering powerful abilities in order to uncover secrets yeah. in this location, Ooh. and in order to carve a path to the great mystery at the heart of the planet. Yeah, and that's what like these concepts. You know, when I look at them in retrospective, as the team is now actively like building a bunch of this stuff. Yeah. Um, it, it's very evocative for me from that feeling of like, hey, how can, it's something Tyson and Alice mm -hmm. and I talk a lot about is like, how can we get that like grand mystery in that game, that feeling that there's something right around the corner the, that like was kind of at the heart, has been at the heart of Destiny for a long time. Yeah. And as we've been closing down the Light and Dark Saga, it's been an amazing roller coaster ride, but we want to expand and grow Destiny and we want to change it. Yeah. And you know, that's what I think these concepts. Um, I think that's a big part of the future of this game, chat. Show, Changing show, the game. Just telling of like, 
some of that direction. Yeah, I mean, it's exciting to see because so I think one thing we don't need more destiny. We need well is, you know, new the destiny. inspirations that you want to obviously provide the players. You build mm -hmm. these new worlds, but you guys have been diving into a lot of crazy subject matter just on your own to get inspired as well. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about kind of some of the fun? And no, that's not destiny. Yeah. Doing as you've been going through this. Sure. One of the fun parts about being a creative is that you have to fill the tank with something, yeah, and certainly. so that means doing a lot of research, uh, finding a lot of other targets in media, or uh, even just like what music you're listening to while you're working on a script, right? Yeah. I know for our team, something that really inspired us uh, was uh, music of the 1960s. We listened to a lot of early prog, a yeah. lot of uh, King Crimson, and a lot of, uh, oh gosh, The Doors uh, and Jefferson Airplane. Um, we yeah, also, there's a lot I don't of know any of those, chat, but if you do, of this. cheery. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we love to look for inspiration outside of just games, uh, yeah. because there's so much in the world that can fill that tank and get us inspired for what's coming next. And she's a she's an a, she's an awesome person. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, t TV and movies is like I like her. I mean, Allison as a director, view. much better at referencing text. I'm a little bit more of a visual guy. <laughs> um, is that the I, nice way to say that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Social media and TikTok have brought it us all. Um, and, and, <laughs> They've just brought it me. Actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, like when we talk about like all this inspirational media, like one of the things uh, Destiny also being a sci-fi game that we talked a bunch about was uh, for the, for Apollo was uh, Scavenger's Reign. That's something that yeah. Allison I remember an early concept and we were talking about. And we're like, oh wow, that that media, that TV show is so great because like it's familiar in some ways, but as you get closer and you really look at their world, it's really strange and different and weird and mysterious. And it really kind of just builds this halo of allure around it that um, is something that really spoke to us when we we're thinking about like how can we introduce something new to the game uh, at the top of Frontiers. That's yeah. exciting. All right. So there's obviously a lot of new inspirations. We have I really like what I'm hearing today, dark, chat. Allison, I got to put you on the spot just one last time. Do you okay. have any other teasers for us or anything you can give us before we just move a little on? Nugget. I got a weird one. Okay. Ooh. Even better. Okay. So have you imagine going to a mansion, like a really nice, really big fancy house? Okay. And not just in the tutorial, the Tomb Raider. No, no, no. Okay. Like, a, right. like a nice. Okay. Yeah, thank yeah. You. Yeah. So you're going in and looking at like a parlor room or something, and yeah. maybe the owner of the house tells you there's a secret door somewhere in here. Yeah. And you're looking around, and you can see the door that you came through, and you can see the window, but it kind of looks like a dead end, like there's nothing in here. Mm -hmm. And everyone knows that a good secret door comes from like behind a bookcase. Right. Like you go up to a bookcase and pull on a book or a little statue that's been in front of your face the whole time, yeah. but you just haven't had the focus on it yet. And if you pull on that, it opens up the secret door, and suddenly what was a dead end looks like an entryway. Yeah. So and that's whole, what this saga is. Okay, that's very exciting. And it, it won't be like Young Frankenstein where I get stuck in the door. Right? <laughs> I'm excited just <laughs> off of that chat. Not even for comedic value. Matthew McConaughey behind, yeah. the, yeah. behind the... <laughs> 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 Interstellar. Okay, all right. Thank you the again, Allison, so Absolutely. much. There's obviously a lot of cool stuff to dive into, but we'll let you and yours keep crafting. Um, yeah. But we've got also one more subject as well. Uh, Robbie, I'd love to bug you about one more There's thing. more, chat. Right. There's yeah. more. Um, so we've seen some feedback on reward tiers and how there might not be enough variation in loot for players to go ahead and get encouraged to go ahead and keep chasing down more gear. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you're all building right now and kind of what that means to you? Yeah, so this is like very valid feedback just acknowledging that in the first place because you know the first thing we, we announced was just like, hey, there's some new tiers, right? Mm -hmm. And then obviously, yeah, you're gonna look at that and go like, well, I have a bunch of amazing armor and weapons now, so like, right. why, why does this matter in the future? And so mm -hmm. uh, totally, yeah, that feedback makes a lot of sense to us. And so what's really top of mind and has been for us for a little while now is how we can uh, make not only chasing gear within individual tiers interesting and the, the whole system interesting, but also how we can make those higher tiers of gear uh, compelling to chase, yeah. right, to have that mountain to climb. And so um, that comes in two forms that I can talk a little bit about today. One I can go a little more in depth on, which is our next generation armor. Yeah. That's gonna be coming uh, with Codename Frontiers. And then we have some really early thinking for, for weapons. Okay. And so for armor, yeah, let's start there. Yeah, yeah. If that's, is that okay, Andy? That's perfect, yeah. if, you, okay. if you wouldn't mind, Robbie. Yeah, okay. I would, okay. I would okay. happy Thank to. You. Um, okay. Uh, so yeah, let me lean in here to, to focus a little bit. <laughs> so for, for next generation armor, um, we really wanna make armor valuable again. We wanna make yeah. it easier to understand. And we really want it to have, uh, create new build crafting identities. Yeah. That's something that's like really close to home for us right now, because we've had a similar system for, for quite a while sure. now. Yeah. And so part of making it valuable, easy to understand, new mm -hmm. identities is gonna, one of the big pieces is gonna be a large stat rework mm -hmm. uh, to the armor pieces themselves. And mm -hmm. so there's gonna be fewer stats 
on each individual piece of armor. Hmm. So it makes it way easier to quickly compare pieces of gear and be like, oh, this one's better than that one. I'm building into a specific, you know, discipline, strength, whatever. Sure. And you can better understand that. That also means that there's going to be fewer, uh, like, dump things we call dump stats. Sure. Like you looking at a piece of gear and going like, mm -hmm. oh man, it only gives me plus five resilience. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't really want that. Trash that's, it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And like, yeah. there's still going to be cases where it's like, oh, it has a lot of resilience, but that's not what I'm building into. Mm -hmm. But it's just going to be way easier to just glance at stuff Very cool. and okay. figure it out. Yeah. But beyond that, right, like how can we answer that question of how can armor, ha next gen armor have this new build crafting identity? Yeah. Um, it also, we wanna bring new things to the table, yeah. right? And so part of the stat rework, we're gonna go beyond 100, Andy. We go beyond, beyond sometimes. 100. We're going we're beyond, beyond Chad. Right. Yep, beyond dark with prismatic. What this else makes sense, yeah. 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 Now we're gonna go beyond 100 with armor. <laughs> who knew, like who knew that's where we go? It was um, hidden in a lore book somewhere, I'm sure, right, Allison? Yeah, right? Vampires uh -huh. are awesome. Yeah. Right. Thank you. No, we'll uh, no yeah. one double check that. Yeah, um, don't, but don't, beyond one, don't check our homework. <laughs> yeah, so, so when we go, so what I mean by going beyond 100, so let's talk about strength, for instance, and so this is some early thinking from the team. Yeah. Um, so in the one to 100 range, it would still reduce your melee cooldown like it does today. It would still have that, so that would still be really easy to understand. <laughs> but then from that 101 to 200 range, mm -hmm. beyond 100, every point into strength at that point would then give you a chance in order to activate a second melee when power melee becomes charged. Oh, so basically yeah. you get double melee. You get to double your throw your shields or double throw your knives or yeah. throw whatever warlock, space magic stuff they throw yeah, in. No, no. I don't play what? I'm a hunter. It's, yeah, I get so. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's I'm, really cool. Jump, Withering blades. Yeah. Is, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but really, like the key thing to there, right, is like that starts to create an identity for what you want to build craft into. That's very different than just like, oh, hey, yeah, I'm building into melee, lower cooldown. That's cool. But now you can start build crafting into like, okay, I'm going to regularly, especially maybe the six arcane needles, start to get double melee charges, mm -hmm. right? And so the other thing we're considering right now is also renaming that stat from strength to melee, <laughs> so that it's just very specific when you look at the gear and kind just of just like, make it you know, easy. Yeah. Just make it simple and easy. Chase, right? Yeah. 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 Another big thing that's coming with next generation armor uh, to the game is set bonuses. And so this yes! is something I know, right? Yes! We won, Chad. Small versions yeah. of it in the past have yeah. been like individual releases, but we're looking at this as like a whole <laughs> yes! new system that's coming with um, pretty much every piece of new legendary armor yeah. set that we create, uh, starting with Frontiers. Okay. And so these set bonuses are going to come in the form of wearing two or four pieces of a five-piece set. Mm -hmm. So that gives you flexibility in order to wear an exotic at any point, totally. and then also allows you to mix and match yeah. different sets. So you can actually start looking at like- Yo, like, let's go! Oh, have, uh, uh, tier one, tier two of one set, tier three of other, mm -hmm. and actually wanna like mix match them together for different combinatorics yeah. for different build crafting identities. Yeah. Um, I'm getting like really deep into the weeds here, but the thing that's like really exciting about this is that uh, like one of the perks the team is playing around with that yeah. these new set bonuses could give you yeah. could be one that's built all around like Tex Mechanica style mm -hmm play, which yeah. is like all about hit firing. I'm right? fucking hype, bro. Yeah. Um, and then yep. like the more you build into that, Holy the, you're shit. gonna be buffing your Tex Mechanica weapons. Yeah. And so what? that's just like one example. Um, but yeah, it's it's the whole space is just gonna like really expand and just become a lot easier to, to, the to depth, manage in your head. Chet, and also it's build the depth. Complexity into. And so I just, depth. I'm super, I'm super stoked. For yeah, yeah, no, yeah. you guys obviously have been doing a lot of great stuff. So we've touched on armor here briefly. Yeah. Uh, all that sounds awesome, but can you tell us a little bit more about weapons and kind of, you know, how they're going to evolve as well. Yeah, so we're, 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 we're a little earlier on weapons right now. Okay. We wanted to talk about next gen armor because we have a lot of juicy, good plans uh, mm -hmm. coming together. Right These now. are really but juicy weapons, plans. The thing I can say is that like in the game today, we have higher tiers of weapons to chase like adepts and raid weapons, right? Mm -hmm. And so those things with them come with exclusive perks that basically, uh, you know, cut above the noise of other, uh, of other, other weapons you might mm -hmm. be earning mm -hmm. in any individual release. And so we know from the gear, the tiering perspective of weapons themselves that like, hey, we already have this kind of touchstone for us that we see that works pretty well. And it's like, so it's really like, how can we meet or clear that bar, right? Mm -hmm. Like how can we create those exclusive chases at the top of that aspirational mountain for, totally. for players to climb. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, so actually, additionally too, we've heard some concerns that, you know, you know, obviously we're gonna maybe be over-indexing on just bringing back reprised weapons. Mm. Yeah. And Guardians will just be out there chasing down something and re-earning something that's just sitting in the vault anyway. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit more They're about just getting kind of to the point. what you guys are planning on doing with each, you know, subsequent release? Yeah, so just to like make sure, uh, to clear the air here a little bit, right? Like every expansion, every season, every raid, every dungeon, mm -hmm there's mm -hmm. gonna be new weapons, right? That's, we're not, we're not slowing down there in terms of like 
m making a lot of compelling new weapon content. Cool. Okay. But you know, the thing about reprisals and revisions that I think is true for a lot of Destiny players is uh, is like you have that favorite gun, right? You have yeah. that gun that you loved at one point in time, and you know, over time, it's just not as useful in the contemporary tuning, activity, sandbox, whatever, right? Sure. Or yeah. just something about it isn't as good over the years. And so like we d did with the Brave Arsenal and Into the Light, mm -hmm. like that's our touchstone for like, hey, how can we go in and update, mm -hmm. you know, fan favorite weapons, bring them back, breathe some new life into them uh, and, and make them interesting to use again. Um, and I also think what's great about that is that people who never got to use, you yeah. know, their recluse or better devils mm -hmm. or something that we haven't uh, prized just yet, really, yeah. um, is like, oh, that's that, that's their first time experience yeah. with them. They've heard how cool yeah, it is. To all the Guardians who are going to dive into Revenant and get to try Chroma Rush for the first yes. time. Oh, yeah. yeah. I oh, am yeah. trying that gun for the first time. It's so good. I'm it, glad it's, it's coming great. back. It's great. Um, okay, that Chroma all sounds Rush awesome. Confirmed. So everything that Robbie just spoke to, uh, there's going to be a next-gen article, a next-gen uh, armor article yep. going up on Bungie.net yep. mm -hmm. after the stream wraps right up. After. Yeah. Um, oh, shit. Robbie, is there anything else you want to say? Yeah, so something that I should probably touch on is, like, we're talking a lot about, like, all this cool gear and, like, uh, but, like, there's a question here, right, that, like, that, immediately becomes posed of like, mm -hmm. like why does it matter, right? Like mm -hmm. why, why do I, I care? They are about really everything. hitting so everything on the head. We've talked a little bit, right, about the fact that there's gonna be customizable difficulty coming in Destiny yeah. with Frontiers. And then right. also uh, changes to modifiers and, and, and things like that with like the Banes that we announced right. in the recent blog post. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so to making expansions deeply replayable, kind of like I was talking about uh, earlier in our section, yeah. and then uh, the customizable difficulty, mm -hmm. and then the new modifier systems, like these are all things that are being built into a structure so that you're gonna need to chase that high tier gear. You're gonna need to craft that complex set bonus, perfect combination of text Mechanica gear yeah. in order to take on some of the hardest challenges mm -hmm. inside of the game. And yeah. so this isn't just about changing gear. This is also figuring out how we can bring new and interesting challenge to Destiny mm -hmm. and how we can really like breathe life into the challenge of the game. So, Exciting, awesome. Yeah. And Should then I'm assuming yeah. that right. higher we'll tier stuff is gonna come from those higher tier challenges. Be arriving on Bungie.net shortly after this, but uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to top what Robbie just said. So we'll go ahead and get ready to go ahead and close <laughs> out the stream here today uh, by first thanking all of you fine folks at home for joining us Chad, today. this was... Uh, we love getting a chance to put these streams on and hang out with all of you. Clap it up for Bungie, because this this was a good ass so stream. Thank you for taking the time. We got a lot today. of really good information uh, today. A reminder as well. A lot. A lot of the philosophies and things that Bungie are talking about now, those are the things that I was mentioning before. Those things had to change for the game to change, really change. And that's what we're seeing with stuff like what they're doing in episodes, what we're hearing about with Revenant, what we're hearing about, you know, next year with Apollo and, and you know, the future expansions, the way they're changing up their philosophies about reward tiers and how you climb those tiers to earn higher rewards, you know, next generation armor, um, revamping in-game activities like reinvesting in Onslaught and adding new maps and new rewards and new mechanics, new enemies, right? These are all things that they're going to be doing going forward and they're going to be rebuilding the game and rebuilding the replayability aspect of the game, which is huge, right? We're going to be getting more of that same philosophy going on with core activities next year, strikes, you know, Crucible, uh, Gambit, like things like that. Um, and then all the stuff they said about Apollo with the with it being a Metroidvania style, you know, um, gameplay experience on a brand new location. That's like, I mean, we've never experienced anything like that in Destiny. So it's going to be pretty cool to see how all of these things kind of come together to create this new vision of Destiny that they're pitching. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, they can talk and share all these things. We got to see how it's executed. But. I like what we're hearing so far. I really like it. Like this, we got a lot. I wasn't expecting this much information. I thought it was going to be like a little bit of tease for like Revenant content and whatnot. We got a whole lot of stuff. We got Revenant tease. We got future stuff. We got details. We got details, chat, which is which is awesome. So yeah, I liked I liked everything that we uh, that we heard.